Hello and welcome back. Our next speaker was, he came and spoke at our first Supercon in San Francisco in 2015. Was anyone there? I know, I know Shani started it. Okay, so he was a 2015 Hackaday Prize winner. He won the fifth place prize and he is a finalist this year. So we'll be announcing the prize winners tonight. So you should definitely come back to see if he's a winner. So during the day, he does, he works, he's, a, he's an electrical engineer who works on implantable medical devices, but at night he does hardware hacking and photography. He just wrote a book about ultraviolet photography and that's what he's gonna be talking about tonight. So please, or today, not tonight. Please welcome to the Hackaday Super Conference stage, David Prucci. Thank you very much, Sophie, for that introduction. Uh, so we're going to be talking today about uh, this strange contraption here uh, to be able to take uh, uh, photography in the uh, ultraviolet. So uh, the visible spectrum, what we humans can see, is a very limited portion of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum. And uh, in fact, it's a very limited portion of uh, even the light uh, spectrum. We can see from between 400 uh, nanometers and uh, 700 nanometers. Uh, but there is quite a bit more outside of that uh, spectrum. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, light outside of that uh, visible spectrum penetrates uh, objects differently and reflects uh, from objects differently, interacts with matter very differently. Uh, for example, uh, if we try to take a picture of uh, someone, we would see that uh, the uh, ultraviolet penetrates very, very lightly uh, into the uh, skin. On the other hand, infrared penetrates very deeply uh, into the skin. Uh, this is the region that we can see, and this is uh, what we usually see in other people. We see the outer portion of uh, uh, the skin. Uh, uh, however, not the, the real dead cells right up front, and not really the veins and everything that else that, that, uh, that uh, sits behind that. So let's take a, a look at uh, this picture of uh, uh, one of uh, my daughter's friends. And uh, this is what we see in uh, the visual uh, spectrum. This is the, the typical picture that uh, we would take. Uh, the infrared penetrates deeply into the skin, so all of the surface features are uh, lost. We're really seeing uh, way deep into the, uh, the skin. We can even see some of the veins up here in, uh, in the forehead. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum, however, <laughs> We see the, only the very outer portion of uh, the skin. We see her makeup. We see every blemish on the dead cells of uh, the skin. And uh, this is my daughter Hannah re getting ready to go to the uh, beach. And I can already see where she's going to come back red at uh, night, right? All right. So. Um, why is this uh, uh, interesting besides, of course, uh, being able to take a look at uh, the uh, uh, information that's uh, there that maybe we can in order to understand the processes better or to do some uh, quality control on uh, materials or do forensics. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, I like it very much is because I like to understand um, how other creatures may see things that we cannot uh, see. And uh, an example is uh, a bee. So we humans have uh, three color receptors. That's the way that uh, uh, we see color. We have a red, a green, and a blue uh, color receptor. And uh, our brain combines uh, the information from those receptors to produce uh, an image in, um, in color. Uh, bees, however, don't have uh, a red and a green receptor. They have a receptor which is very sensitive in the yellow uh, region of the spectrum. They have a blue receptor, and they have a receptor in an area of uh, the electromagnetic spectrum that we cannot see in the ultraviolet. Up in the, uh, it's sensitive mostly in the 350 nanometer uh, region. Um, and what is so interesting about it is that um, uh, flowers have co-evolved with uh, bees to have uh, this, this type of, um, uh, of pigment 
are called a, um, uh, a flavanol. And these flavanols uh, have a, uh, uh, a spectral um, response that is exactly within the area where uh, bees are able to see in the ultraviolet. So we can see, for example, up there, the absorption spectrum of uh, flavanol really matches very nicely the uh, spectrum where bees are able to see with uh, their receptor. So uh, A uh, on that uh, picture on the side is uh, what we are able to see in, uh, in a flower. B is the ultraviolet uh, uh, channel that uh, bees could uh, see. C and D are possible ways in which maybe a bee can see. Uh, B uh, and C, uh, C and D are the type of uh, pictures that uh, we humans uh, would see if we would have our uh, sensors, our receptors in the eye displaced into the spectral sensitivity of those of a bee. So let's see how uh, we can take uh, uh, that type of uh, pictures. First of all, um, uh, human eyes, we send that are sensitive between 400 and 700 nanometers. Camera sensors, uh, silicon camera sensors, are uh, uh, sensitive between around 300 and well into the uh, uh, near infrared into the uh, 1,000, 1,100 uh, nanometers. So why is it that we cannot simply take a DSL con uh, our camera and start taking ultraviolet pictures? Uh, the uh, reason is that uh, the incoming spectrum is filtered within the camera and all of the optical elements so that it will give a faithful reproduction of a color picture for us humans. We don't usually want to take pictures that uh, look like uh, the, you know, a ghost or uh, uh, that, uh, um, that uh, Dorian Gray type uh, uh, image. We want to see pictures that are very, very similar to what we see with our own uh, eyes. So DSLR cameras uh, usually filter all of those uh, uh, images and all of those signals. Um, all right, so the, the first myth that we have to uh, get rid of is that uh, uh, we need glass that is made out of uh, quartz, that uh, the lenses are made out of quartz, completely unnecessary. Uh, uh, you can uh, remember that uh, the spectrum that we're looking at with uh, one of our silicone cameras goes up to around 300 nanometers. Uh, and uh, borosilicate glass, normal glass that is used uh, for lenses, uh, really can go all the way up to 300 uh, uh, nanometer, uh, nanometers. In fact, um, uh, glass that uh, high quality glass in uh, lenses usually goes uh, at um, to wavelengths that are under those 300 uh, nanometers. So quartz is really needed when you're looking at uh, uh, taking pictures into the ultraviolet B into the ultraviolet uh, uh, C. Uh, those are areas that uh, we're not going to touch that our silicon sensors cannot uh, get into. Uh, you really need uh, very different uh, types of uh, cameras for that. Uh, the reason why uh, lenses really don't uh, pass ultraviolet uh, um, light into the sensor is because they are specifically coded not to pass ultraviolet light. Uh, ultraviolet light, uh, uh, in fact, uh, blurs the image in the days of um, uh, uh, film photography, uh, the blue light and the ultraviolet light would give this ugly blur into the image. So uh, uh, usually you would put some type of uh, ultraviolet filter in front of the uh, camera so that uh, you wouldn't get the ultraviolet uh, in. These days, uh, those filters are used a lot more to prevent uh, you damaging the, the lens. So you use them as sacrificial uh, protectors rather than uh, really for their uh, UV cut uh, purpose. But uh, definitely the coatings are still uh, there. Uh, and um, uh, you can get dedicated UV uh, lenses, but these are really, really expensive lenses. These are like $6,000 uh, lenses on uh, eBay. 
and they are absolutely not uh, needed. So how do you go about it? First of all, uh, there are some prime lenses uh, that uh, are older lenses from uh, manufacturers usually in the post-war period that uh, are uncoated. Uh, many of them come from uh, Russia uh, or from uh, East Germany where the coding processes uh, were not there, so they just left the coding out. And these lenses are excellent because they pass uh, the um, uh, ultraviolet image without uh, much filtering. Uh, in addition to that, for those uh, who are old enough, you might remember how we used to develop uh, our pictures and uh, 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 then turn them into actual uh, printed paper pictures. And uh, you may remember that uh, uh, we had this red light that had a little uh, red glow so that uh, you could see things because ultraviolet, uh, because uh, 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 black and white uh, print paper is insensitive to uh, red. It's sensitive to ultraviolet. And to produce very sharp images, you would take advantage of the blues and uh, uh, ultraviolet in the uh, halogen light that was used in the uh, enlarger in order to produce that uh, beautiful uh, image. So one way of uh, doing this is uh, by using uh, a lens that is dedicated to, um, uh, for the uh, ultraviolet uh, region for uh, enlargers. However, one thing that you uh, want to remember is that the enlargers didn't have a focusing mechanism on the lens. You had to focus using uh, the bellows on the enlarger. So you had to give uh, the uh, lens some form of um, uh, focusing mechanism. So you have to add a uh, focusing helicoid or some mechanism that uh, you have to uh, rig in order to tune uh, the, the lens. Uh, to its position, and in addition to that, the uh, focal point of uh, those lenses uh, was made for a very long uh, uh, distance with a very short distance to the uh, negative. So uh, you also need to separate it enough uh, from the uh, sensor so that uh, you could uh, project uh, the image. The next uh, place where the ultraviolet uh, signal gets cut off is through what is called the uh, IR, uh, uh, the ICF, which is the uh, uh, infrared cutoff filter. And then there is an anti-alias uh, filter in there because it's a digital camera. So all of those have uh, UV coatings that uh, get rid of the uh, uh, UV signal. So the first thing that uh, you have to do, and probably this is the most uh, complicated piece of uh, modifying a camera for uh, uh, work in the ultraviolet, and we'll give you a camera in the infrared as well, is to get rid of the infrared cutoff uh, filter. The reason that uh, camera sensors have this uh, uh, IR filter is that um, uh, the camera sensors are exquisitely sensitive in the, uh, in the infrared. And uh, that uh, uh, means that uh, you need to get rid of that uh, uh, infrared uh, so that it will only leave you the ultraviolet, uh, the uh, visible spectrum. However, camera manufacturers usually coat that lens against ultraviolet as well. There are some older Nikon cameras where the, uh, that don't need to be modified because uh, the uh, infrared uh, uh, cutoff filter does pass the ultraviolet uh, wavelengths. Now, uh, since it, the, the, the camera is so sensitive to the infrared and to the um, uh, visible, you have to do something in order to filter out the image so that you will get uh, the ultraviolet uh, in. And that means that uh, you have to get rid of all of that. You have to get rid of all of that, and you have to be left just with uh, the ultraviolet. And uh, uh, that means that you need to use an ultraviolet filter. However, please notice in the graph in the top that uh, ultraviolet filters also have an infrared uh, pass, okay? The, the first uh, um, subharmonic is going to be in, uh, in the infrared 
and the camera sensor is so, so much more sensitive to that infrared signal than in the ultraviolet signal that if all you do is take a, an ultraviolet uh, um, filter, what's so-called an ultraviolet filter, put it in front of your camera, all that you're going to get is uh, an infrared uh, signal. So what you really need to do is filter that and uh, add an infrared uh, cutoff filter that will get rid of uh, all of the uh, infrared, but nevertheless allow all of the uh, visible and uh, UV to go through. My favorite is uh, uh, a filter that is ready-made, although I can show you how to make uh, uh, your own. Um, so uh, that gives you a camera that now allows the ultraviolet signal to go through. The only problem is that how do you actually see what you're trying to take a picture of because now you have a camera that passes light that your eye cannot see. So you have to use uh, a composition in live view mode, which is a great uh, thing with digital cameras. You can turn on the screen and see what you're actually taking a picture of. Uh, and last uh, thing that uh, you need in order to take a picture is light. Uh, sunlight is great, uh, but in addition to that, uh, uh, you can see that the spectrum here on, at sea level starts to get rid of a lot of the ultraviolet light that uh, we need in order to take uh, pictures. So a very good way of dealing with that is uh, to add a flash. Flashes uh, usually have some uh, way of uh, filtering the ultraviolet. So you also need to modify those cameras uh, in order to get the ultraviolet through. So let's get to uh, how do you actually produce uh, these uh, uh, pictures. We said that uh, we take a picture that is going to contain the visible channels that uh, bees have, a picture that contains the ultraviolet uh, channel that uh, bees uh, have, and then we somehow have to combine those channels to produce the images. That means that uh, after you take uh, the pictures, you're not going to see them straight out of uh, your uh, camera. You're going to have to take them and uh, uh, put them in your computer and do a little bit of uh, channel swapping. So uh, uh, Photoshop uh, can uh, take care of that. MATLAB uh, can do it. Uh, any of your uh, programs that uh, are able to actually decompose the images into their uh, RGB channels will allow you to extract the independent uh, channels. Of course, that means that you have to take uh, one picture without uh, the filters. Then you have to take another picture with the ultraviolet filters. Now you have uh, a total of four channels, uh, the red, green, uh, the blue, and the ultraviolet. And now you're going to start uh, combining those uh, images. Uh, that uh, requires a lot of uh, being able to uh, precisely match the things because the uh, lenses are going to distort the images in different ways for the visible and the ultraviolet, which means that uh, you're going to spend some time uh, uh, in front of the computer trying to uh, put them together. But there is a way of cheating, which is to actually use filters uh, in, uh, in a way that they combine so that uh, they already pass enough of the information that uh, straight out of uh, uh, the image you're able to take out one picture that is going to look very much like the original um, uh, image that you would have obtained by combining in Photoshop the right channels. For example, like this, this was not done through uh, two independent photographs that were then um, uh, separated in Photoshop and uh, put together again, but rather a single image with the right stack of uh, violet and ultraviolet uh, filters. Um, Sophie mentioned that uh, uh, I uh, worked on uh, polarimetric imaging uh, some time ago, and this is because I like to see the way that uh, animals uh, that uh, have th these different uh, senses are able to see things that we cannot uh, see. And uh, that makes me very interested in uh, the way in which uh, uh, really other animals are able to uh, see with a channel that we cannot even map. Bees, as you might remember, had three uh, channels. And uh, the difference between bees and uh, humans is that uh, the uh, channels are simply shifted towards uh, the, the blue. 
Uh, however, butterflies, and there are some birds, uh, who are tetrachromats. They have four true channels. They have our red, our green, our blue, but they also have an ultraviolet channel. So how do you actually add information to an image that uh, we cannot simply replace uh, colors and say, yeah, that's probably how they, uh, they might see. You actually have to uh, think about ways in which um, uh, the additional information can be added to the channel in a way that uh, we can still see it, but nevertheless not lose too much by substitution. So possible ways are uh, to highlight a color and to add it to the image, uh, or to change the intensity of the image as a function of uh, the ultraviolet uh, channel. And what uh, that does uh, is uh, give us a different uh, perspective on what we can see. So here we have uh, a pair of butterflies. Uh, the top uh, butterfly is a male white cabbage butterfly. The bottom one is a female uh, white cabbage butterfly. Uh, and uh, the only difference between them visually is that uh, the female butterfly has one extra little dot in the forewing. Now, if you're a uh, male uh, butterfly looking for some friends, uh, and you're beating your uh, wings at the distance of a block and you need to count uh, dots and the butterfly that's uh, there to see if uh, you're going to be wasting your time going all the way uh, there or not, you're in trouble. That species would have probably vanished from uh, uh, the, the, the tree. However, remember that uh, this is what we see. Uh, butterflies have that uh, ultraviolet channel that uh, gives them some additional information. And uh, uh, here's probably how a butterfly sees uh, uh, their fellow butterflies. So it's much easier to see which one is the male and the female butterfly by adding that uh, fourth uh, channel of uh, information. So besides uh, seeing uh, uh, stuff like uh, bees and butterflies, uh, ultraviolet photography can be used uh, for forensics. Uh, I like that picture on uh, the top. Uh, uh, one of my friends uh, gave that one uh, to me. It's um, a picture uh, in the visible range uh, on the left and on the ultraviolet in the other one. Uh, what does it tell you? Someone just fixed that car from an accident <laughs> because the top uh, most layer of the, um, uh, of the paint hasn't faded away yet. And uh, we cannot see it because uh, our eye, remember, uh, is able to see light that penetrates a little bit uh, into the uh, material. However, ultraviolet is being absorbed and reflected by the top coat uh, of the paint, so we can see the difference uh, very clearly, uh, which also allows us to see things that are uh, very hidden in uh, a visible picture, yet uh, the uh, sand and any silica on uh, uh, shoes is going to put a very, very thin uh, layer uh, on any material, and you can very easily see uh, that in uh, the ultraviolet uh, channel that you could not see directly in the um, uh, visible channel. Um, now remember, Old style photography, collodion uh, photography, the plates that, that were glass coated with uh, some uh, silver iodide. Well, collodion uh, photography is really uh, UV photography. Uh, silver nitrate, silver uh, type of uh, uh, materials are sensitive to the ultraviolet. Uh, look at uh, what is the sensitivity spectrum uh, for that. It's uh, well into the blues and ultraviolets. Uh, whereas our eyes and um, uh, normal DSLR, uh, DSLR cameras are sensitive at the 400 to 700 nanometer range. So my view is that uh, uh, people uh, who were photographed uh, with uh, old style photography were not as grim as uh, they look. I know that those were really uh, bad days and they worked a lot harder than uh, we do today. But nevertheless, I do have a little bit of an explanation regarding that. This is my mom. 
Uh, Left-hand side is uh, a picture of, um, of her in uh, the way that uh, we see it. Uh, Right-hand picture, on the other hand, uh, is uh, more of a Dorian Gray type uh, portrait of her. Uh, this is in the ultraviolet, and uh, what happens is that uh, really same pose, same exact uh, everything. You see that every single uh, outer skin cell that is uh, dead shows up in uh, the ultraviolet, which doesn't show in uh, the normal visual uh, range. Uh, so I think that uh, this type of picture that we see from before, these were not as grim, grim as uh, uh, they look in the pictures in uh, Collodion. Besides uh, uh, annoying your mom and making her look uh, even older than she might be, uh, <laughs> the uh, one application of uh, uh, this idea is in uh, archaeology. Um, there were many discoveries that uh, were made in uh, the uh, uh, early 1900s, uh, late 1800s. Take, for example, that picture uh, up there on the right uh, upper side. That was taken by uh, Hiram Bingham, uh, the American discoverer of uh, Machu Picchu. And uh, he took uh, that picture, of course, with some uh, type of uh, silver nitrate uh, uh, type of uh, camera. And uh, if we want to understand uh, weathering patterns and what has been done uh, to the rocks since that uh, time, we wouldn't uh, just be able to take a normal uh, picture and try to compare the two, because the, the two really don't compare to each other. They're taking completely different uh, spectra. If you don't consider that uh, uh, the type of material that was used to take the picture back then is nowhere near the type of material that is used to take the picture now. In 2016, I took uh, that picture uh, in, uh, with uh, this camera. And I think that uh, if you do some archaeological research, uh, that picture on B is m a much better comparison uh, to the picture on A than if you actually take a normal picture and try to do archaeology with uh, that. Uh, you can, um, uh, so uh, uh, there's of course a lot more uh, technique uh, uh, to deal with in, uh, infra in ultraviolet uh, photography. I usually uh, uh, put uh, uh, whatever I do in uh, UV and IR imaging in uh, my blog uvirimaging.com. Uh, uh, or you can find the complete uh, description in uh, the book Exploring Ultraviolet uh, Photography. And I'll be here available for your uh, uh, questions. Thank you. <laughs>